Hey guys, I'm Ayan Bupalam. I'm a fourth year medical student at Johns Hopkins, and I'm excited to be working with my friend Malky to start the brand new MCAT division for the match guy. So I scored at 524 when I took the MCAT and have tutored dozens of students across the country since then. And I thought it would be helpful to share some of my experiences, you know, talk about the resources I use, when to use which resources, um, what self-assessment tools to use, and uh, the best study strategies. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is define your target score. Um, based on the medical schools you're trying to apply to, your score that you're trying to target is going to be slightly different. So I would first recommend subscribing to the AAMC MSAR database that has all the most recent up-to-date uh, data of the MCAT scores, GPAs. That's a place to start. And to give you an idea, the average successful DO applicant has an MCAT score of about 504 while the average MCAT score for a successful MD applicant is about 511. And if you're looking at top 10 or top 15 MD programs, you're looking at five, above 518 or 520. So let's say you're targeting your state school and the average MCAT score for that school is 509. You're going to want to get around a 509. You don't really need to shoot and spend all that extra time and stress to get that 520 because it's almost like a checkbox. If you get about a 509, you're gonna be fine. You wanna dedicate that time to doing other things that are gonna differentiate you from all the other applicants that are applying to this. So now let's talk about the resources that you should use. This is actually one of the hardest things to figure out, but it's also one of the most important things you can do to ensure that your studying time is efficient. So there's so many resources out there. There's, you know, the Kaplan, Princeton, Berkeley Review. You know, you got the exam crackers, the next steps, AAMC materials, Jack Weston. You know, the list goes on. So when you use which resource and should you have access to all these resources? First thing is that you shouldn't have too many resources. You need to prioritize the resources that you're using. If you have too many, you won't have any uh, proper focus and your brain won't know how to learn in a methodical way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break down for the four sections, which resources are most high yield and what you need to focus on. So let's start with the car section. This is the most notorious section of them all. This is a section that students have just a misery getting through. It is very challenging. And I think one of the reasons it's challenging is it's unlike any of the things you've done before. So like the SAT and ACT are reading sections, but they're very comprehension based. And uh, same with the school exam. Now the MCAT car section is not a reading comprehension exam. It's an exam that wants you to be able to recognize important ideas and then it'll test you on those ideas. And what I like to explain to students is that it's actually quite relevant to medicine. The reason that the AAMC decided to use this section is it actually kind of simulates some of the skills you're going to use in your clinical encounters in medical school. So when you see a patient, you're going to interview them and you're going to have a lot of different information that you get from them. They're not going to tell you only what you need to know for the diagnosis. They're going to tell you all kinds of random stuff. And then you're going to get your lab exams, your lab tests, uh, your imaging tests. You're going to get have all the access to the records from prior hospitals, the current hospital, what other providers have put in their notes. There's just so much information. And what you need to be able to do is to pull out what's relevant for that specific time and analyze that to figure out what the diagnosis is and eventually come up with a treatment. And this is similar to dissecting a car's passage. Most of the information that's presented to you is not relevant. You need to figure out what the important ideas are and then those are what is going to be tested. How do you do that, right? So I'm gonna tell you what resources you should use and in the future, you know, I will give some more tips on how to exactly go about these things. So there's only two main things I would recommend for cars. One is the AMC materials, of course. And number two is the Jack Weston passages. So to start with the AMC materials, there's the question pack one and the question pack two. These are very high yield uh, resources that all the students should go through at least twice. And they're very hard questions, but it's worth going through. These are would be more towards like the more challenging passages you're gonna get. And then the uh, cars passages in the AAMC tests one through four and the sample tests are a little bit easier and they're a little bit more at the level of the actual MCAT. So the second resource I'd recommend is uh, the Jack Weston questions. So Jack Weston uh, actually partners with the AAMC and uh, uses um, his method to explain uh, some of the answers to 
the questions on the AEMC practice exams. Now he offers a free section bank and free daily questions on his website and I think are the most representative of the AEMC uh, practice questions. So I would focus your time on that. And if you're really in dire need for more questions to get through those two next best resources you will. Let's talk about the two science sections now. So you have bio, biochem and chem physics. I'm going to combine this into uh, one section as I'm talking about the resources because I recommend the same resources for both sections. Now, uh, I like to divide the resources into more content based resources and then the resources I would recommend for the questions. For content, the Princeton Review books are excellent. Kaplan books are equivalent, but I just prefer the way the Princeton Review uh, books explain the material. I feel like it's easier to understand. And the next resource I would use is the Khan Academy uh, videos on YouTube, as well as the Jack Weston podcast. Those are also great, great resources to supplement uh, your reading in the textbooks, uh, the Princeton Review textbook. Now the question resources are, of course, the AAMC, and specifically the Section Bank is an important resource to use. There are harder questions, but they're the ones that are most representative uh, of the actual exam. The question packs are actually very yield, low yield, even though they're by AMC. These are questions that were pulled out from old MCATs way before 2015, when the MCAT was radically changed into a more analytical based exam. They're really not that helpful as far as giving a gauge of how the actual exam questions are. They're much shorter and just based on uh, facts and content. So I would recommend just maybe quickly reviewing them before your day, uh, a few days before your exam, just to kind of go through it really fast and get an idea uh, of some extra content. But definitely not even a big deal if you don't even uh, prioritize or even get to those resources. Now, the next best resource uh, after the section bank is the uh, UWorld questions. UWorld questions are really good for the science sections, they're quite representative. And there's a lot of them, so that's what I would recommend doing. And uh, I wouldn't really recommend going through, you know, too many other resources as far as uh, science section bank questions. Um, just sticking to the AEMC and UWorld should get you uh, what you need to do. Now, one of the most important things I tell my students is not to divide their studying into content time and then questions time. Questions need to be started on the first day of when you're starting your dedicated MCAT study. And the reason is, is that the questions you do will determine the way you take in the content when you're reviewing. So we'll talk more about reviewing later in this video, but keep in mind, do not divide into two phases content questions. You need to combine them, do content. You can have more content heavy towards the beginning. You need to be doing regular questions throughout your study. So let's talk a little bit about the psych so section. Now this section is a little, relatively straightforward compared to the other sections. Uh, what I would recommend doing is use the Kaplan uh, review book to go through the content. It is uh, relatively more in depth than the Princeton review book. The Princeton review book does have some good charts, but Kaplan book I think is a little bit more thorough. Um, but either of those books alone is not going to do the trick. I would also recommend using the Khan Academy notes that are on Reddit. So there's two versions. There's a 100 page version and the 300 page version. These notes are compiled by many people who have uh, studied for the MCAT and have been revised for probably over eight or nine years now. And they have all the possible topics and explanations for each uh, topic. And it's very in depth and very useful resource. Uh, the best way to study is take the 100 page resource, read a section of it, and then re read the more in depth version, the 300 page. If you just start with the 300 page, it's uh, way too much content to digest. Also doing the psych part of the miles down Anki deck could be helpful. Now for questions, the AAMC section bank questions are the best. And I would also recommend doing the UWorld questions. Now let's talk a bit about some of the assessment tools out there. Uh, there are the five AAMC exams. So you have the sample exam and then exams one through four. And then there's a bunch of other practice exams from uh, different companies. I would recommend the AAMC exams by far. And then if you have time, maybe purchase a few next step exams. So with the AAMC exams, the sample exam is the one you should take first. 
It's the only uh, exam out of the all day AMC exams that doesn't give you a score, it just gives you a percentage. But this exam is more to just kind of get your feet wet uh, and learn how it feels to take the whole uh, exam in one sitting. Then I would also recommend taking exam one uh, in the first two or so weeks, two to three weeks of your studying. That will give you an actual score, a baseline, and uh, give you something to compare to as you're taking exams three, uh, two, three, and four. Now I'd recommend that you don't take the exams more frequently than a week apart. And the reason is, is that it takes almost a full day to review an exam after you take it. And it is an assessment tool, not like a section bank, which is a practice tool. You gotta be using it as an assessment tool. So after you review the questions and all of that, and if you take do it very often, you're not gonna have time to have enough time to practice uh, the mistakes that you made before and change your strategies to improve, uh, to get an improvement for the second time you take it. Take exams about every week or so. So if there's five exams that would take you about five weeks, you wanna add maybe one or two next step exams. So say about seven to eight weeks is your ideal study period. Obviously that's not possible for all people. The things will be after modified, but ideally we don't want about uh, two months to study for this exam. Another question that my students often ask me is how predictive are these exams? So I'll just talk about, you know, exams one through four and then some of the other companies. So exams one through four are supposedly the most predictive among all the exams. Generally people score uh, around the same score, maybe one to two points higher, sometimes a few points lower, but that can also vary quite a bit. For example, my last practice exam to the real exam, I scored six points higher. Uh, there is some variation and it can depend from person to person, but the AMC exams are definitely the most representative. The other exams, for example, the Princeton Review and Next Step, they often are a little bit harder and your scores may be slightly deflated. So don't feel too bad if your scores aren't exactly, uh, you know, where you want them to be. Go off the AMC exams. So let's talk about some high yield study strategies. So the first strategy is what I like to call active reviewing. What this means is you go about doing all your questions and once you grade them, you don't look at the correct answers. You just mark which is right, which is wrong. And then uh, you go back and redo the questions to see if there's any you know, silly error or something that's easily fixable. But most likely the majority of the questions are gonna be questions that you missed for content reasons. So then what you do is go back to your primary resources, either you know, your Princeton Review books, your Khan Academy videos, notes, all of that. Review that topic. So if it's like the Krebs cycle, you wanna review all those enzymes, all of the high yield points, when to know what. And then you go back to the question and you can look at the explanation and see you know, if you got the question correctly and got all the high yield teaching points. The reasoning behind this is when you're reviewing in the context of a question, your brain is automatically looking for certain bits of information that the question is tuning you to. And this is more of an active learning study strategy, which will allow you to retain all the information much better. So if you just do content, uh, you know, just read the books, that's very passive. You don't retain that much information. Going towards a more active learning, active reviewing strategy is what I recommend. So the second study strategy is strategically spacing the subjects you do throughout the day. Now, a lot of my students, you know, will be complaining they'll be studying 8, 10, 12, 14, even 14 hours in one day, and they barely even get half of what they have on their schedule. Now, this is a common problem because, you know, we're just not designed to be studying that intense material for so long in a row. So you need to break this up. And what I would recommend is start the morning with a car section. You know, you're tired. Uh, this will uh, requires intense reasoning and will require you to wake up quickly. And once you do a little bit of cars, then you can switch up to some science sections, do some active reviewing. And then after a couple hours, you go to psych -soch, uh, and then before lunch, you know, you can do a quick, some more cars. And then after your lunch time, you want to make sure you're doing questions because you're tired. You know, you don't want to go into food coma. You want to start right away with questions. You don't want to just be doing reviewing. So you do questions and then uh, after you do, you know, say some science questions, you'll move on to more cars and then psych -soch, and then so forth. So what this essentially means that is that you'll be covering the subjects multiple times at different parts of the day and will allow you to consolidate the information even throughout the day and will require you to change focus 
you know, every one and a half to three hours, which keeps your brain awake. So if you're just doing a subject for four hours in a row, you know, by hour one and a half or two, uh, you're stop, you're stop focusing, you know, you go on your phone and all of this. So this is what I would recommend for uh, strategically spacing so you can uh, be far more efficient in your studies. So let's talk about note taking. I would recommend that you take only a limited amount of notes. What I've seen with my students is that pre-meds love to take notes. They think that this is the best way to study and it's equivalent to doing well in an exam. They do uh, you know, pages and pages of notes, different colors, highlighted, all of this stuff. This time can be much better spent uh, doing questions again, you know, reviewing content through different modalities. Even spending time listening to some podcasts or YouTube videos is a better use of time. What do you want to do about notes then? When do you take the notes? You want to take very limited notes just to uh, highlight things we've missed multiple times and write down the categories of topics that you need to revisit. That's about it. You don't want to copy what you have in your Princeton Review Book or your Khan Academy notes and you're just making a copy. That's not very useful and it's just not a great use of time. Spend that time active reviewing and uh, doing questions. So I personally didn't take that many notes at all and I didn't really feel like uh, that was hurting me in any way. In fact, I felt like I had a lot more time to review more questions and that's what helped me get more efficient with my study. So we've gone over a lot of things today. So here's a quick overview. So the first thing you want to do is define your target score. Once you know what you're shooting for, you can figure out how many weeks you need to study. And then you can prioritize the resources that you need to use. So going section by section, the car section. So for the car section, you want to focus mostly on AAMC resources and the Jack Weston uh, question banks that are free online. Remember, it is not a comprehension based exam. It is an exam that's trying to test your ability to pick out ideas from a lot of stuff where 70% of the stuff you don't really need to understand in the passage. Then for the science sections, what you want to use for content are Princeton review books, um, and also Khan Academy YouTube videos and Jack Weston podcasts. For questions, of course, AAMC is king, and then UWorld questions are excellent as well. So for PsychSoc, you want to use the Kaplan books for content, as well as uh, the Khan Academy 100-page document and 300-page document that you use in tandem. And then, of course, the AAMC section bank and UWorld questions are good uh, to review that. Now, the next thing is the assessment tools. Uh, you want to use the AEMC sample test first and then test one through four. Uh, space them about a week apart. You don't want to do it too close because you won't have time to change things before you take the next um, assessment. If you run out of those, then next step one and two are great exams to take after. So for studying strategies, we talked about active reviewing and then strategically spacing uh, the, the sections you do throughout the day. And then also minimizing the amount of notes you take and spending that time to review questions and do more questions instead. So guys, I hope this video was helpful. This is my first time making a YouTube video, so I appreciate uh, comments below. I uh, would love to hear what other topics you'd like to hear about. I'm also excited to be working with Malki to uh, start MCAT tutoring. Um, I will be one of the MCAT tutors and I also have many other MCAT tutors uh, lined up who are in a 99th percentile. So. Uh, we'd love to help you out and uh, we look forward to seeing you in the next video.